Hi, good afternoon. Mio Baclini here. Just wanted to show you a quick demonstration about um, how I quickly go through and call and edit photos for my mom's new paintbrush line. Um, she just launched her custom brushes that are made in Italy. They're natural and synthetic. Uh, she's got some oval, some round, French round brushes and a wax brush. Um, I'll have to ask her which one is which because of that I'm not sure. She just gives them to me and then lets me paint and have, you know, have a field day with them. So anyways, this is my Lightroom. Um, I've already taken the photos. I shot raw and JPEG because sometimes uh, shooting correctly in camera just requires minor adjustments. So sometimes I can just do that straight off the JPEG. Um, but I shoot with the backup raw just in case that I need to do some uh, more color correcting or anything further than that. So let's get started. I've already um, imported my photos off of my camera onto my Lightroom. And so basically what I'm doing right here is I am, we'll start from the beginning. I go through and I hold it down, I hold shift and then I click N. And this is just like first, first gut reaction. So you can see I already started going in and, and playing with um, flagging them. I usually hit P or you can do a number system one through five, uh, whatever floats your boat. I have my own little weird way of, of how I like to call. Um, so let's see like this one I already marked that because I did a practice video before this one. And then of course, later on, if you need to get in there and check the detail on that, you can, and then let's see, flag is pick. Okay. So we'll get in here. Okay, flagged that one, that one. So my method to culling is I only flag the ones that I want to keep, not the ones that I want to get rid of. Um, because if I need to go back, it's just easier for me to, to go back and pull, um, you know, like if one is slightly out of focus or whatever. And... Uh, try to make sure to include a lot of negative space. That way, if she wants to throw some text on it, she has room to do so. Um, so I did all the standard brushes with just a very simple background because um, I didn't want to overcomplicate it. And I wanted uh, to leave a lot of space. So if she just wanted to do something like white text or whatever, except for these ones, I kind of had fun with some fabric, but and then these are just shot on some white foam core board that was like three or four bucks at Hobby Lobby. Um, we learned this in my photography school 101 uh, at the Academy of Art to use these. So it's nothing new, nothing fancy. We have to a little. Okay. These ones I got the top because I wanted to capture just the tips. Yeah. Like I said, I'll go through and call through again. I just, I really. Oh, that's cute too. Okay. Oh, you should have seen me trying to shoot video. Just some quick little, like, all fancy trying to take the brushes and let the bristles go slow motion. Like, but yeah, it doesn't work when you're the only one shooting. So. Um, okay, so let's get this. I wonder if this is the wax brush. I'll have to ask her. They felt really good. Oh, there we go. Nice and sharp. Hit N. And we'll throw those in so you can see the difference. And these ones were a little bit dark, but that's okay. These ones would be good for her social media, um, just for some kind of filler. So she's read, oh, she's not redoing it. I'm helping her redo her her Instagram, and because um, prior she had a business based out of Boulder City, where she had an actual store that she would um, repaint and finish refinish furniture. So now she's strictly online only, and she found a manufacturer to make these amazing brushes that are super high quality and they don't leave a lot of marks. Um, it's good, you know, she can go in there and tell you, like if you watch her little Facebook live, she'll go in there and tell you about like all the, the perks and benefits of the natural and synthetic bristles and 
why not to use the cheap chip brushes and um, there are others in this category that are very similar as well. So let's see, let's go through that. Okay, so you get the idea there. And then these, so if she needs just some simple solo shots for the website, for the product. Um, if, she, if anything ever goes on sale, whatever, she can come back and use these same, these same images over and over again. Okay. And then, oh, yeah, this is funny. This is the, the videos that I was trying to... I didn't have any sliders or tripods or anything today. It's just hand holding and trying different methods of like getting the shots that I need and the the angles and the lighting. I'm obsessed with with lighting everything. So okay. So anyways, I'll mess around with the photos later for some more behind the scenes uh, to put on her Instagram. But that is culling. And then I will go through an attribute, filter out my flagged. See, okay, so that took it down to 46 images. So then I'll go through again afterwards and um, cull them down even more. And then what you'll have by the time we're done, let's see if I don't, oh no, the rainbow wheel of death. I need a new laptop. I don't think I liked that very much. Okay, so I shot these on Kelvin. So that all I had to do was make some minor adjustments here. Um, I'm a very big stickler for straight lines. It really bothers me. So, something like this. I might bump the contrast just a little bit, but keep it simple. And then that way, right here, she can throw her logo or throw her text, whatever. And then for the ones on the whiteboard, because what I notice is that when a lot of people who don't do photography um, try to do stuff like this, uh, their cameras will go into a color correction where it just automatic white balances. And what's happening is it's trying to bounce off of the white, but then you have mixed colors coming in from the lighting from the window or from the LED, whatever it is that you're doing. And so it's trying to overcompensate and correct what it thinks it's seeing, but you can't always fully trust it. So that's why I always try to do um, like a custom color balance or a Kelvin and pick a temperature. And that way, all I have to do, if I'm gonna shoot in the same lighting scenario, it's easier to batch color correct everything. So right here, if you take your brush, you can see that when you hover, um, if you are trying to pick a target neutral, the R is 75, green is 76.9, and the B 77.1. So there's a lot of green and blue to this, so that's why it's a lot cooler. So we can click that, and let's see. So that brings it all close to 73-ish. And then I'm fine with that, because It's my mom, it doesn't have to be super perfect. She's just appreciative that she gets free work, but it's not really free. Like I owe her my life because she's my mom, right? But you get what I mean. So anyways, um, let's see if we can show you. Never mind. okay. So, well there, here you can kind of see like the, before and after. The 
just kidding. Okay, well anyways, you can see how just that little color correction makes a huge difference. Um, and then it looks good. It looks better on your website, looks better on your social media when everything is um, clean, clear, consistent. So there we go. That is my quick little behind the scenes of today's photo shoot for Paint Pixie Brushes, um, which, oh, her website is paintpixie.com. And then you can order online, whether you're just um, buying for just you for some projects or if you are wholesaling, wholesaling, a wholesaler and looking to carry her line. Um, so that's it for today. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.